Hello, this is Troy, and I'm going to go over a uh, how to use a custom hand-wired board or how to program or configure Easy AVR to support your hand-wired board, uh, including backlights. So the place we're going to start is at the Easy AVR Geek Hack page. Geek Hack is where Easy AVR kind of lives and where Metallica's, the guy who wrote it, does a lot of great work. <clears throat> so navigating here you can see that there's a link to the wiki page and to the github page. Uh, the wiki page will get you to the uh, the download links and talk about a lot of features. Uh, unfortunately there's not a lot of documentation regarding hand wiring. So downloading the standalone build here will get you easy AVR and will get you running. However it will not get you running uh, for hand wired boards at least at the version that I was at previously wasn't a lot of uh, documentation supporting it but like I said he's very responsive on the uh, easy AVR board or on the geek hack thread for easy AVR and if you search through that thread or you're probably gonna have to search through it search for handwired.py there should be some more information about it there otherwise it's a very long thread uh, so downloading this will get you easy AVR, but it will not get you started hand wiring your board. You can do that by going to the GitHub page. And it says source at GitHub. Click that link will take you here. And from here you open the key mapper. And easy key map. And boards. And here's where you're going to find your hand wired link. The hand wired link is going to be where we're going to start. And there's notes in here. It's basically set up default, but download the raw file and start working with that. You're actually going to want to store it on dot easy AVR in your home directory, whatever that is. Uh, if on Linux or on Windows, it is just going to be period, capital E, and easy, and then AVR, Alpha Victor, Alpha Victor Romeo, and AVR will be in all caps. But save that locally, and then uh, you can edit it. This is pretty straightforward. There are a few little caveats, particularly for the backlighting. Your description is how it's going to be displayed within Easy AVR. Unique ID is just uh, something unique to this hardware layout. So you might have uh, two different boards, I'm sorry, two different circuit boards for the same model of keyboard. And config name is going to be your, how the configs are going to be named in their layout basically. So if you save, a se save settings for one board and then load it for another board, the config needs to match. The config name needs to match. Teensy is true in our case. Uh, we're going to be using a Teensy 2.0. I assume you will too. If not, there's more details on the Easy AVR Geek Hack thread. Hardware boot key. This just tells you, asks you if you want to be, uh, or if your chip uses a hardware boot key, if there's a physical one on the board. Number of rows and columns is where we first start customizing. Uh, in our case, this is a blank, uh, the a 40% model. So it has four rows total, not starting from zero, and 12 columns not starting from zero. The strobe calls or strobe low, we don't really need to mess with those. Those are pretty standard. It just means, uh, changes the way that your diodes are pointed. Your diode should be pointed toward or from from the row to the switch. There's pictures of that, it's pretty easy. Here's where we start really customizing is the rows and the columns. These are what pins in order of the rows. So starting with row zero, row one, row two, row three. And same here, column zero, two, or one, column two, column three, column four, column five, all the way down. These are the pins that those are on. So pretty straightforward. Number of LEDs is the total number of LEDs. This is how many indicator lights and backlights you're going to be using. 
usually uh, or in, the, in our case we're using one indicator light the one that's built into the teensy and then three LEDs R G and B and if you had an uh, indicator light for caps lock or something like that that you could use for status then you could add more but that is the total number and then this is the number of indicators so in our case only one and then three of them are going to be for backlighting number of backlight enabled modes is going to we'll, we'll come back to that led definitions these are for your indicators what do you want the led to be named and what do you want the default settings to be or the default setting for that led to be uh, just make sure you have a name for each indicator light and that name makes sense and is unique for the, where it's laid out on the board. Here's where we actually start doing the uh, LEDs. The indicator light is on port D6 and that is the Teensy default. So that's actually this letter here and then the following number. So D6 is the default for the Teensy 2.0 LED indicator that we're going to be using. And that one is pulled up, which means that the pin is connected to the anode of the LED. Now on the LEDs below that, the RGB LEDs, those are connected to the cathode. And you can tell that because there are four connectors on the L LED strip I'm using. One is for red, green, blue, and the fourth connector is plus. So it's getting a positive connection there. And then the connections from RG and B are necessarily the, the minus side, which is the cathode. So connecting those to the cathode, since it has a plus on it, the plus goes to VCC, which is just straight power off the teensy. And then the connection is actually made at the pin, and the pin is going to be pulled down. So that'll be connected to ground. So pulled down, that's kind of where that comes from. This will get you... Uh, so that those are the pins that's the direction that it gets pulled and then next section is backlighting in our case backlighting is true because we are using uh, the, the number of LEDs we have the total remember is four we're using one as an indicator and the remaining three are backlights so above we had noted the number of indicators this is one of those things that's it's like implied how many uh, backlights you have then. So with backlighting true, we get to backlight modes. The modes are for every LED. These are the states of every LED set that is connected. So the one in the beginning, it's based on the number of LEDs you have total. So this is the indicators. So if there was a backlight mode like, uh, for instance, this bottom one where it's zero, zero, zero. These are in order of the, um, of the section above. So first one is the indicator LED, next R, G, and B. So here down, we've got the same the indicator LED state, the R, the G, and the B. So up here we can see the indicator is on, which is one, R is on, G is on, B is on. So full light, all RGB on, which is white, technically. I guess that's what they're going for. With all the indicator on, <clears throat> or with the indicator on. So in this case, I don't have any instance where the indicator is turned off. If perhaps I wanted to have one where, uh, one particular mode where all the lights were off completely, I could do something like this. And then that would just be an extra mode, but no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> so, as I said, we're just kind of, this is every situ every combination of one and zero for three options, and that's kind of what we're going for. There's no way to do pulsing from here. With Easy AVR, it only supports on and off, so um, other systems allow you to pulse some and pulse others and do kind of transitions where the you know, the, it fades from one color to the next. That's not really something it does here. It only has uh, which LEDs are going to be part of the backlighting and then whether or not the backlighting fades. So you can't really switch you know, this, uh, this one 
it can't be one one and then zero slowly increasing to one so you're kind of stuck there but it's not that bad having rgbs uh, so those are the backlighting modes and if you really just didn't want any you could always just do all of them on or all of them off or if you only wanted red and off that's easy enough so that would be indicators on red on green off blue off and then all of them off so that's how you would handle that this also is your count this is eight settings here that's your count for your number here backlight enable modes which is eight so i think we've covered everything here uh, down here your keyboard definition keyboard definition is your uh is a set of tuples indicating the basically how it's going to look visually so visually this is these keys all of my keys in this case are four size four and four so they're all the same size uh, and if you wanted like an enter key you would change the amount or change the size here uh, I believe it's width and then height and then the second tuple is your uh, tuples are within this uh, within parentheses in Python the second tuple is your column and row position so in my case everything's pretty straightforward uh, everything is mapped from left to right, top to bottom. So my row is zero all the way down, and then my columns are listed here. Note they do start with zero. And then escape is my uh, top left. Yes, basically. <clears throat> and then going down, same size again. And, and then row, and then column and then what the key is. These are just the default settings. You can leave these uh, these words blank, but they are, uh, you can also, it's basically, it's the starting mode. And note also that when you're going from row to row, there is a uh, column here, or there's square brackets around it, because it is a list of, it's, uh, it's a list of a tuple with a tuple and a tuple. So, not that complicated just copy what what's there already uh, this should actually be all you need to do to be able to start up easy AVR select uh, new default layout and then select what you have written here in your description that will get you kind of the basic settings and then from there you can use easy AVR's standard functionality to control the LEDs and uh, when you want things to be displayed and all that good stuff if you have any questions, uh, leave them in the comments. If they're too hard, I might send you to the uh, to the the thread on Geek Hack. Uh, however, I feel like I have a pretty good understanding, so hopefully, I won't have to make you wade through that whole thread. Uh, that's about it, I guess. Uh, oh, how to turn it off? The mouse isn't actually plugged in. Do I? Do I press? Get this. Button. Click on this. Oh, no, that's not it. Hang on. Okay. We're unplugging, unstopping. Good. Goodbye.